This is for when Granny in a hurry, right here. Are those duckies getting you? Yeah! They're gonna get you! <laughs> the duckies are gonna be moving out soon. One day this weekend. <laughs> they still need the heat lamps too, so we're gonna get them their own box. Welcome back, y'all. We've got a fun video for y'all today. We're gonna be making three new Easter recipes, and these are all three grandma's favorites. Not my grandma, or even just one grandma. Several different grandmas that I don't even know, but anyway, for the first one, we're going back to last night when we made these hot cross buns. All right, we're starting out with one cup of warm milk. It doesn't need to be too hot, not too cold, just pretty much like room temperature. And then we're gonna mix it with one pack of active dry yeast. If you have a container like this, it's two teaspoons and a quarter teaspoon, I'm pretty sure, but I'll have the exact measurements in the description box for y'all. But you're just gonna combine these two together and let it sit for just about five minutes or so, just while you get all the other ingredients ready. Okay, so I'm just mixing that a little bit with a fork and then we'll set it over to the side and go ahead and bring out the KitchenAid to get everything else going. Okay, so the first thing we're putting in here is two tablespoons and two teaspoons of softened butter, and it was it was sticking to my bowl there, so I had to grab something real quick. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna put the butter in there, then we put in an eighth of a cup of sugar, and I did cut this recipe in half. It makes like 30, like the full recipe makes, I think, 30 of the hot cross buns, but I just wanted to do about 15, so I did cut this recipe in half. The recipe that I put down below for y'all will be the one that makes 30. That was a three-quarter teaspoon of salt right there. All right, next we need half a teaspoon of cinnamon and an eighth of a teaspoon of allspice. It took me a minute to find my allspice. I knew I had it in there, but I had to dig for it. So what looks like just a few seconds took about five or six minutes. Now we need three cups of flour. So I go ahead and put the flour in and we're gonna let this stir all these dry ingredients together first before we start adding in the egg and the yeast mixture and all that. Okay, we got that stirred together. Now I'm just switching over to the bread hook attachment and we're gonna put in one egg and it needed to be a room temperature egg so I had to go get one and wash it off real quick. Now we're adding in the milk and yeast mixture and then we're just gonna start it up. We start on low at first, then we turn it up to about medium speed and let it mix until it forms the dough ball. And I didn't have to add any more flour to mine. If you see that it is too sticky, you can add a little more flour, just like maybe a fourth of a cup or so. But yeah, mine, mine was pretty much just right when it got done, so I didn't have to add any more. All right, so now we just put in about half a cup of raisins, and I put just a little bit of flour on my hand so that the dough wouldn't, you know, start sticking to it too bad. And I had a bowl over to the side that I sprayed with a little bit of cooking spray, and we're gonna use that for it to rise in so that when it rises, it doesn't stick to the sides. Okay, so now we're just transferring it over to our sprayed bowl. We're gonna cover it with a clean, dry towel and let it rise for one hour. All right, one hour later. So I did this just like I do the yeast rolls. I just put down a little bit of flour and I cut the dough in half and then in half again and you know, just keep dividing it like that so that all the rolls are about the same size. I still get them sometimes where there'll be some smaller ones, but they're pretty close to the same size anyway. By this time, everybody was starting to smell this dough because it smells so good while it's rising and they were all coming in there asking what I was making. Okay, once I got them all ready, we just cover them again and they rise for another 45 minutes to an hour. So after an hour, I had the oven preheated to 350. So now you're just gonna take a really sharp knife and cut the cross into the top of them. So after you get the crosses cut into them, you can make an egg wash to brush on top with just an egg yolk and a little bit of water. I forgot to do that, so uh, I didn't. And they turned out fine. Whenever they came out of the oven, I just rubbed a little butter on them instead. So if you forget the egg wash like I did, don't worry. It's not a big deal. It's just 
to them. They want to go to sleep. Why are you making them a smile? I'm not making them a smile. We're gonna make crosses on them. Okay, so here they are out of the oven, and like I said, I just brushed a little butter on top, but as you can see, some of my crosses didn't come out too great, but that's fine, because we're gonna put an icing on them, but I did decide to wait until the morning to make the icing, and all we do for that is just a little bit of powdered sugar and a little heavy cream. You can use milk instead, but you want it to be a pretty thick icing. That way, when you put it on there, it doesn't run off the rolls. It, you know, stays in place and in shape. Okay, y'all, these are good. We had them with breakfast this morning. Very good. They're like cinnamon roll meets yeast roll. Add raisins, they're great. Okay, banana cream pie. This one is so easy, y'all. I have a video for an old fashioned banana cream pie that, you know, is definitely not as easy as this one. It's not terribly hard, but there are a lot more steps. It is wonderful. I will link that one down below for y'all. This one is very, very easy. It's no bake. It'll take you like five or 10 minutes to put it together. Then you just stick it in the refrigerator. I can see why grandma likes this one. <laughs> this is for one granny in a hurry right here. Uh, we need one cup of milk, sissy. So we have this box of instant vanilla pudding mix. We're gonna mix one cup of milk with it. The box calls for two, but we're only gonna mix one because we're gonna be adding whipped cream to it. Why do you this up here? I just, I just said it right there yesterday. Yeah, get that one, Cece. I like the wire one better, but that's still a I like the wire one. Yeah, I like the wire one better too, but that silicone one will be fine. <laughs> and I've had the whipped topping sitting out, so it should be thawed. We're ready to go here. We're gonna mix a whole eight ounce container with the pudding. Okay, now we just slice up these two bananas. So we've just got a graham cracker crust. We're gonna put half of the pudding mixture in the bottom, spread it out. Now we put a layer of bananas. Now we put the rest of the pudding mixture and then we top it with more whipped topping, which my other one is still a little bit frozen. I'm gonna have to let that continue to thaw out for just a little bit. This one, I don't wanna stick in the microwave and put it on defrost because then, you know, we're putting it on the top. That's not gonna work. We don't want it to get too soft. Okay, so now we'll just put this in the refrigerator while we wait for the whipped topping to finish thawing out. And then we'll just put that on top. And that one is done. Okay, next up, we're making a loaded Easter potato casserole. The first thing we need to do is shred the cheese. This is gonna be a side dish that we're gonna have with supper tonight. You can use any cheese you want to. We've got Colby Jack. I'm gonna shred this whole pound. We just need two cups shredded, so we might not use all of it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and shred it all. We'll put it in the refrigerator if we have any left over, or we might just add it to the top. All right, Stacy got the cheese done for us. Now we're gonna bring over this big bowl. So in here, we're gonna put 30 to 32 ounces of shredded hash browns. Now I can never find a 30 to 32 ounce bag. So I just got two of these 26 ounce ones and we'll just add a little bit from the other one. Jonah wants y'all to see his latest Lego creation. Hello, happy spring. Here's the flying fish. Hope y'all enjoyed that show. <laughs> Is that all cheese? No, that's hash browns. Oh. Woo, now that would be a cheesy casserole. I found the cheese. You did. <laughs> All right, we're putting in one can of cream of chicken soup, one and a half cups of heavy cream, half a 
half a cup of melted butter. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this a little bit before we add the rest of it. I've already got the nine by 13 casserole dish over here. Cece grabbed that for me. I'm just gonna spray it with a little bit of cooking spray. Trying out new Easter recipes is a good way to get supper started early. <laughs> I'm just gonna make some beans and cornbread to go with this tonight and probably some baked pork chops. I have a lot of pork chops in the freezer, so I think I'm just gonna bake some pork chops to go with it. Now we need half a cup of sour cream. And I'm just gonna eyeball this because if there's a little extra sour cream, I don't mind. I love sour cream. Half a cup of grated Parmesan. I'm also gonna eyeball that. Okay, we'll mix those in. Oh, I need to preheat the oven. Yes, I do, to 375. Okay, putting in a tablespoon of minced onion. Could also do, you know, some fresh onions if you wanted to. All right, now we're putting in half a teaspoon of garlic powder and some salt and pepper. Now, the last thing for this part is the cheese. We need two cups of shredded, whatever kind of cheese you wanna use. Like I said, we're using Colby, I mean, yeah, Colby Jack. Okay, now we'll just sit this over to the side. Just kidding, we're gonna go ahead and dump it into the casserole dish. We'll go ahead and sprinkle this leftover cheese on top here, it's just a little bit. All right, y'all, for the topping, we're gonna crush up one sleeve of crackers. The recipe called for Ritz, but I have these townhouse crackers, so that's what we're gonna use. I just crushed them up in the pack. Now we'll dump them in here. I have this bacon that I cooked up earlier and just chopped it up. We're gonna put that in. It was about probably a total of four or six full strips. Okay, we're putting in half a cup of grated Parmesan. We're gonna shake in some paprika about half a teaspoon, and some parsley flakes. And that is the topping. We'll just mix this all together, put it over the casserole, and then it's going in the oven uncovered for about, since my hash browns were thawed a pretty good bit, I'm gonna go for about 35 to 40 minutes. If your hash browns are frozen, you wanna go about 45 to 50. The whipped topping is completely thawed now, so we're gonna go ahead and put it on top of the banana cream pie. We've got dessert ready for tonight, too. We'll just put those beans in the Instant Pot later, make some cornbread, season some pork chops, and put them in the oven. There we go. Now, if you want to, you can put peaks on here. I think I'm just gonna do some little waves like this. Yeah, I'm gonna do the wave look. You wanna try the wave look, Sissy? You just take the spatula and just go up just like that, make some little waves. You do that half. Oh, that looks nice. You see them? Yeah. We're gonna put a little mint leaf on here if I can find one that's good. These are, it's kind of old. We don't even have to taste test it, y'all, because we kind of already did. Don't even worry, don't have any fears. <laughs> we know it's gonna be good. I'm gonna put this mint leaf here. When we get ready to serve it after supper tonight, I might put like a couple of banana slices or something, but they'll turn brown if you do it too soon. So that's it for now. Grandma's Easy Banana Cream Pie. Okay, y'all, this is another one that I feel like we probably are gonna love, but since we've never had this exact potato casserole before, we're gonna taste test it real quick. That way we can let y'all know how it is. The only thing I can say, Grandma know what she doing. That is so good. That's like Cracker Barrel's hash brown casserole times 10 right there. That's wonderful. Okay, everybody else is tasting it and loving it. I'm telling y'all, that is so good. So let us know in the comments something you always have on Easter Sunday or something that your mama always made or your grandma always made. We just might try it out. Because I love grandma's recipes. <laughs>